and uh, last night I had a lot of fun doing the live stream. So I figured, what the hell, I'll give it another shot. You know, last night was kind of a test, and honestly, I kind of started <laughs> doing this more for like therapeutic reasons to vent. That's why I kind of call it talking to myself because I really didn't expect anybody to listen. So, um, you know, if anybody does or doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Um, <clears throat> but I'm going to be doing this. I, don't, I, you know, I don't know if it's going to be a regular thing or not. You know, right now it's just kind of going to be, oh, maybe I feel like or that there's something that pissed me off today and I'll, you know, send out a tweet that, hey, I'm going to do this tonight. So that's kind of how it is for now. It's honestly like more about my therapy than anything else, so it kind of works out. Hey, Florence. <clears throat> so, um, hey, Yikomino. I'm probably saying that totally wrong. I'm retarded. But, all right, so <laughs> I like if, if, I, if I do do a stream, I really have to, you know, I'm going to have a, an occasion to do a like daily fuck you. <laughs> like somebody gets dedicated a fuck you just to them. And today it's the media. So fuck you media from Babbling Brook because I swear to God, I'm sitting in the lobby today, um, you know, waiting for training to start for my job. <laughs> and I'm going, I'm looking at, I, pu I pick up my phone and uh, one of the media headlines pops up on my phone and it says, North Korea was hit and that's it. Now, to any normal person, when you get a headline that pops in your face out of nowhere and it says North Korea was hit, you think, oh fuck, it started. It's World War III. Holy shit. So, of course, you click on it and it's, it was hit with an earthquake. I'm like, I, I swear to God. <laughs> it's like, you, fuck you, media. Seriously, I get it. It's like, you know, headline, headline, clickbait, whatever, it, it sucks. And fuck you for doing that. It just, it, it just blows. Because normal people, that just freaks them out. And that's what you want. And you know it sucks. And you're a dick. So, fuck you, media. That is what, who my today's fuck you goes to. So, anyways. Um, alright. What else was I thinking about today? Um, did you, okay, so... I don't know if you guys saw the three UCLA basketball players who got caught shoplifting in China and they were arrested. Um, they were facing 10 years because China doesn't play games. They don't fuck around. You know, you don't fucking shoplift in China. I mean, you don't shoplift, period, but you don't fucking do it in China. And these three basketball players from UCLA go over there and get caught shoplifting. They're facing like a decade in prison, in Chinese prison. <laughs> and Trump went and talked to the Chinese, you know, president, whatever, and, um, and they released him to the U.S. And I think like their punishment is something like they're apologizing and they're suspended or something shit like that. I mean, they're really, their, uh, their punishment is bullshit. It's, it's nothing. Um, <clears throat> it's actually, um, really, really funny because Trump, <laughs> after this, and he, you know, it's so funny because, because party realizes like Trump's just a couple steps ahead sometimes. And it just, it's so funny to watch because Trump, Hey, love you too, Albie. <clears throat> um, <laughs> but like Trump sends out a tweet that says, gee, I wonder if they'll, you know, cause they're from UCLA, they're black, they're very most likely very liberal. Hey, Platty. <clears throat> um, they're just, you know, they're very typically not Trump supporters that, you know, you wouldn't think they would be Trump supporters, but you know, he did this for them. So he tweets, oh gee, I wonder if they're going to even say thank you. And so one of the you want know, one of the kids at the press conference did say thank you. He said, and I'd like to thank President Trump. And I swear it was almost like a, well, I'm the, yeah, yeah, I am the good guy. Of course I'm going to say thank you, you know, type of it. It's almost like he dared them to, and then they did. But you know, now Trump's like, ooh, now I got that sound clip for 2020. <laughs> you know, I got that in my pocket. These fucking UCLA liberal players saying, I want to thank President Trump. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's really funny how this whole thing plays out and listening to Trump's tweets because 
he really, he is this, just the strangest president. He is. He's, um, of course, you know, when it came down to the choice between him and Hillary, I definitely chose Trump. Um, but it's just a very odd time. It's an odd time to be an American. It's an odd time to be anywhere. In fact, it was really odd. Um, when I was in Ireland, and I actually wanted to make a video about this, but I never, I never ended up doing it. When I was in Ireland, <clears throat> it was my mom, since, you know, we don't, my mom doesn't like talking about politics. And it was, so, you know, she said, you know, don't bring up politics. And so I promised her, I said, I won't bring up politics, you know, while we're there, I won't bring it up at all. You know, I just, I don't, I wanted a break from all of it too, you know, I, I was like, I won't bring up politics, I promise. I said, but if somebody else brings it up, I'm not going to keep my mouth shut. She's like, oh no, I wouldn't expect you to do that, you know, just don't bring it up. So I agreed. And, um, I didn't, I was, that was cool with me. I didn't want to bring it up. So it was fine. But Trump had just been elected. I mean, this is in May of this year. And so everybody, as soon as they found out we're American, the first thing was, <laughs> oh, Trump this, Trump that. And it was really funny because I had, it took us, we traveled for almost 30 hours to get, <clears throat> hey, Billy. <clears throat> we traveled for almost 30 hours to get to um, Dublin. And we get there and I went down to the pub with my cousin Joe because it was his 70th birthday. And we hung out at this pub and I was arguing with this this local, he'd never even been to America. Never, ever been to America. This guy, finally, and it dawned on me because if, at first, arguing with him, because he said that Obama was the greatest president we'd ever had. I'm like, no, no, Obama is not the greatest president we've ever had. He was a horrible president. You know, I mean, he's, uh, Obamacare is a disaster. It's just, everything's really fucked up. It's not a good thing. And he argued, and he's like, but he was your first black president. I'm like, what does race have to do with anything? Why? What? And it was... <laughs> Thank you, Rex. <clears throat> um, it was just really crazy because he just kept pounding away at the fact that, oh, he was our greatest president. And, you know, how can you not think that? And finally, I asked him, I said, well, have you even been to America? And he's like, no. I'm like, then what the fuck? Why are you, why are you, why are you doing this? Why are you, <laughs> Lindor, support that super chat. Make Brooke great again. <laughs> Hashtag make Brooke great again. Yeah. <clears throat> nice. Thank you, Rex. Anyways, I get distracted seeing these things come up because I, I'm exhausted all the time, guys. Anyways, okay, so <laughs> there's this other thing in the news. Olympian, I don't, I'm going to mess up her name. I'm going to sound like a dick. Um, Ibtihaj, Ibtihaj Muhammad honored with first ever hijab wearing Barbie. So Barbie is now wearing a hijab. No, I won't do that. I won't even, I'm not going to dance for anybody. I am happily married, remember. <clears throat> so... Ibtihaj Muhammad is no stranger to making history. In her 2016 Olympic debut with Team USA, Muhammad became the first Muslim American athlete to compete, to compete in a hijab. Now she's inspired a new Barbie doll, the first Barbie to wear a hijab, according to Mattel. <clears throat> uh, the doll was announced at the Glamour Women of the Year Summit Monday, where Muhammad was honored as part of the Barbie Shiro program, which recognizes female pioneers and innovators. The doll will be available in fall 2018, according to Mattel's spokesperson. <clears throat> Previous honorees, blah, 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 blah. In addition to earning bronze and women's team foil with the United States, the New Jersey native also started a modest fashion clothing line called Luella, Mattel noted. So, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. It just seems like the Barbie Shiro program just makes me kind of cringe. Shiro, hero, Shiro. And the messed up thing is, I just, this makes me cringe and I feel like a dick because part of me just doesn't have a logical argument for why it makes me cringe. Um, except that, I don't know. I don't think it's cool to cover people. I just, I don't agree with the whole idea of the hijab at all. Um, I don't think it's... I think it's very, I don't think it's empowering whatsoever. It's covering somebody up. It's taking away their person that, you know, 
it, it's it's just kind of ridiculous. And <clears throat> and she's also it's you know they act like they're doing this huge thing. I I, I don't know. I don't know. It just, it kind of drives me nuts. But, anyways. Um, so, also in the news, Charles Manson is in a grave condition at in a California hospital. So, apparently, Charles Manson is very sick or something. Um, I think that what happened is instead of watching reruns again, he decided to, like, see what was going on with, um, you know, current events. And he saw all the feminist and SJW bullshit and was like, this is too crazy for even me. <laughs> Satan, take me now. <laughs> Now he's in the hospital and he's going to die. So <laughs> that's my take on it. Put on pum. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much uh, what's going on today. I just had a exhausting day. I'm uh, training for a new job, which is interesting and fun. It's something like seriously different for me. Um, <clears throat> but I'm, you know, I'm having a good time and... Oh, it's just traffic in Washington is weird. You know what? Okay, you know what else is really fucking weird about living in Washington and about how will society go on without Charles Manson? I don't know. I, I don't know. That crazy fucker's been locked up forever. I, I, I just, I don't know what society will do without him. Save money on taxes, I guess, <laughs> would be my answer <laughs> to that. <clears throat> we won't have to pay to keep him alive anymore. Um, yeah, anyways, so something else really fucking weird about coming back to Washington is I moved to Arkansas about a year before they legalized marijuana here, Washington State. <clears throat> so it was about a year before marijuana became legal that I moved away. So every time I visited, like the first time I visited, it was really strange. And you know, for anyone out there who, because there's, marijuana does really have a bad stigma. It's very much used like, it's not like, oh, everybody's partying and stuff like that. It, it, they just kind of incorporated it more therapeutically into their lives, I guess, like at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Uh, um, replacing anything else that, like drinking and stuff like that and, you know. Well, to a point. But a lot of people just incorporate it in, in a different way. It's not like everybody's partying all the time or anything like that. It's just, it's very, very weird though. Like, coming back home and all of a sudden there's like pot stores everywhere. And it's just really freaky. Which is funny because when I moved down south, we thought the freaky shit was the fucking, <clears throat> we thought the freaky shit was the drive through liquor stores. We're like, what the fuck? They have drive through liquor stores here? Are, are they out of their fucking mind? Like, it was the weirdest thing. And then, you know, you get used to that. You live down there forever. Do I like Gordon Ramsay? I do. I love Gordon Ramsay. <clears throat> I think he's hilarious. Um, anyways. <clears throat> um, thanks, you made me totally lose my train of thought. Thank you. Um, the weird thing about coming back here is, like, the marijuana stores everywhere. There are... Pot stores, like every, you'll be out in the middle of fucking nowhere and there is a pot store. It is the weirdest fucking thing. <laughs> he smoked weed with Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> it was insane. <clears throat> that is, yeah, that is nuts. TLC for your basement. It's not my basement, it's a garage. <clears throat> so actually it's very, it's fine, it's comfortable. It's not mine either. <clears throat> Anyways. It's just a place in the family farm that I can <laughs> that I can have a little privacy. <clears throat> um, but it's really strange to come back here and you like <laughs> my mom. My mom took me to the fucking pot store. <laughs> I if you had fucking like I swear to God, if ten years ago you had told me that someday my mom will say the words to me, Brookie, are you out of marijuana? I would have laughed in your fucking face. I would have I would have been like, <laughs> yeah, bullshit. But she said it. It was the weirdest, weirdest fucking thing in I've ever I, I don't know, it's very surreal, you know, like just suddenly moving back here and and <clears throat> and it's like it's nothing. It's just it's they and they implemented it in a very smart way. 
Um, they really do a good job of, you know, about, uh, you know, there's, same, there's the same open, kind of open container laws and I would have laughed to you right after checking for hidden mics. You know, <laughs> that's, that's actually a good point. But there, you know, it's legal here. There's nothing, it's totally normal. It's, there's nothing wrong with it. And so many people that you would never think in a million years would do that. It, it's like they do. And it's actually helped them a lot. People are, you know, it's funny because I, like I was saying yesterday, I I started listening to the Joe Rogan podcast more often. And he talks about how he it's he's definitely like, even when he's not smoking weed, you know, just he's definitely kinder and thinks about other people more. And, um... You know it is definitely more empathetic and I I agree that that I'm the same way that it definitely um, I think more you know I spend more time <clears throat> like and even when I'm not smoking weed but if I <clears throat> you know I don't have to be stoned at the time obviously but it, if I do it occasionally and I, I do feel like I'm a more relaxed person and I spend more time with my kids um, I'm a more focused and better mother and not while I'm stoned, you know, just, I am, I'm just more empathetic. I think about what they need from me, you know, what kind of, you know, of a parent they need me to be or what, you know, I would need at their age. You know, I try to put myself in their shoes more. I think it does make me a lot more of an empathetic person. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, hey, Shadowway. I'm glad you made it this time. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of crazy. Um, the the whole marijuana thing is just is a very very strange, um, strange thing. And the, the really messed up thing is is that we voted in Arkansas. Um, we had voted it in to to we had voted to legalize it for medical purposes back at the end of 2016. Now at the end of 2016. Uh, okay, you guys are distracting the shit out of me. I, that, that fucking, I'm totally technologically retarded, like I told you guys, but so that keeps popping up and I can't focus on what I'm saying. <clears throat> so this is really fucking boring for anybody listening because I keep looking at the fucking. Yeah, I acknowledged my super chats. I didn't see any other super chats. <clears throat> Anyways, um, now I totally fucking forgot what I was saying. All right. Um, anyway, so that's my part. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I totally, you guys totally fucking, I, I get in conversations and then I totally zone out, especially when I'm really tired. It's been a really long fucking day. But, um, I didn't realize I'd be this sleepy by eight o'clock. Like, my, I have weed stores, mother, more chilled. Yes, I am a lot more chilled. <clears throat> I am a lot more relaxed. Um, I, I do feel a lot better and it, but it's, it is, uh, and everybody, anyone who thinks that they don't, or we, or we voted it in Arkansas. That's what I was talking about. We voted it in Arkansas and they, I actually talked to a woman, um, at the Elks Lodge and she was an elk and I talked to her and she was one of the people that was trying to open up a, um, a weed store. <clears throat> down in Arkansas, a dispensary for the people when they legalized it medically because we'd voted it in in like the end of 2016. And so it's like, dude, we voted it in, let, where are the dispensaries? Where, you know, doctors were actually asking for their green cards and stuff. And I actually even saw that a couple of doctors had gotten the um, the card, the all, all of the legal stuff that they had to get in order to prescribe it. So that was all in place, but the guys, um, they didn't have any dispensary set up. There was, there's still, to this day, as far as I know, I mean, I've only been gone for, I moved here October 21st back to Washington, so I haven't been gone that long. To this day, as far as I know, there is no, there are no dispensaries that are open yet. It was supposed to be available to us as far as dispensaries for medical purposes on um, April 20th of 2017, you know, 420. And they never did that. They, uh, there was no dispensaries available. So it turns out that they send, they sent the people who asked to do the dispensaries. They sent the people from the dispensaries, um, 
that wanted to open the dispensaries to Seattle to, to learn how to do everything. And they had to purchase their seeds from Seattle. They had to learn all of the skills, um, everything that they could um, from Seattle. And uh, that was fine. But then they came back and um, <clears throat> um, they came back to Arkansas and they were ready to start opening dispensaries and suddenly they need a permit that costs $300,000. $300,000 for a permit for the dispensary. It's almost like they are trying to, and you've got to understand the cost of living in Arkansas is probably about half of what it is on the coasts. Um, <clears throat> you know, not quite half, but almost half. Uh, it's it's a lot. Well, it depends on what you're talking about. If you're talking about houses, it's way less than half. Um, but it, it the the cost of living is really, really, um, really a lot lower in Arkansas. So, three hundred thousand is unfucking believable for, and they are just trying to make everything impossible for these dispensaries to get opened. They don't know. <clears throat> they don't know what to do. And I've actually heard that they're having trouble in Washington State, like the stores are, because the, it has to be a cash-only business for the simple fact that since it's not legal federally, um, because it's not legal federally, you can't pay federal taxes on it. And since Washington doesn't have state taxes, so they're not paying taxes on it at all, it's a problem. Um... But Colorado had set it up perfectly because somehow, because they have state taxes, so, you know, everyone's paying state taxes on marijuana. I mean, it's it's working much better there, where Washington is having a problem because of that. And I, I totally get that. I think as far as, <clears throat> you know, I mean, you'd think it, it would make sense if they had state tax at least on that, you know, a way that they can, exactly, It's if Uncle Sam can't get a cut, it's illegal, exactly. It's really messed up, you know, this is why the Civil War, you know, because state against federal is just kind of, it's the whole Civil War right there. Oh, speaking of Civil War, holy shit. Did you guys fucking see that Sweden, in Sweden, they burn down, like, people are fighting back, fi like, people are actually finally fighting back. Um, they're burning down a ton of these places where the, um, got a very bad connection it looks like that sucks um <clears throat> the it, they're burning down all of these places where the migrants are living or are <clears throat> that are that are either slated for migrants to live there or where the migrants are living and these places are being burned the fuck down google and uncle sam get a cut of this deuce <laughs> from your flung poo <clears throat> <clears throat> thanks you flung poo <clears throat> but um it was, it was really crazy because they're finally fighting back and it's like, well, what the fuck did you expect? You know, their wives, their mothers, their daughters are getting raped in the streets. And, you know, a lot of people, when they kind of hear these stories, you know, and it's, it be, I pay attention, I've paid attention for a long time to a lot of current events, like, you know, on a, on a daily basis. I get a lot of, um, you know, I do watch a lot of news and I get a lot of, I, you know, and I shouldn't get news from entertainment sources. I have a filthy mouth, love it. <clears throat> um, I don't get a lot of my news from entertainment, or I shouldn't get my news from entertainment sources, but, you know, I, I, clips of the news are in some of my favorite YouTubers' videos, so I guess that kind of counts. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but I do watch, like, Ben Shapiro. He's, I, I trust him. I love how Ben Shapiro can take um, an issue, take any issue, and just make it, you know, really kind of point out the logic and everything. He can, like, no matter how crazy and fucked up and angry, like, normal people get an issue, he will, like, sit there and look at things logically um, and kind of, like, <laughs> smack everybody back to, to the real world, which is kind of nice. I like that about Ben Shapiro. He's, he's an interesting uh, personality. <clears throat> um, I enjoy watching him a lot. But, uh, hang on. I'm going to cut this short in a few minutes, you guys, because I have to get up really, really early. i got to take my kiddo to school in the morning.
was actually. But as far as, okay, so as far as the first hijab Barbie goes, I have to say that <laughs> I can see, like, I have, I live in, right now I'm staying with um, my brother and we live like on five and a half acres. My brother and his wife and their six boys between 15 and two live in the house and my son is staying in there too right now. Um, we're just up here, you know, I'm starting working and stuff and then, you know, it's just very temporary and then my husband's, my hubby, who I love so much, is gonna, he's wrapping things up in Arkansas and then he's gonna come home and join us and so we're just kind of like working to get, you know, out of this place. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, Ben Shapiro is the logic machine and yes, I am married. Happily. Thank you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's funny. Shit. See, you guys fucking distract me. Damn a husband, that makes me sad. No, it's a good thing. You know what, though? I would not, like, you would never even have seen me on YouTube ever, it, like, if it, it wasn't for him. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta kind of balance it out. <laughs> like, she never would have been on YouTube ever. We wouldn't know who she is and... You know, hopefully I make y'all laugh occasionally. You know, I try to do stupid shit to make you guys laugh sometimes. And, um, and, uh, stuff. Actually, you guys, my husband, uh, had the best, he had the, the most viewed video on my channel forever. Like, forever. It was really funny. Um, he was, it was back when Armored Skeptic and Jenny McDermott were going through that weird argument and stuff. He is sweet. He's, I love my baby. I miss him to death. It's really hard right now not being with him, but um, that'll all change soon. So, um, but <laughs> this is Jenny. It's Jenny begged for begs for armored skeptics forgiveness. You guys, it was really fucking funny. Um, he just on a whim, he was like, "Grab your camera," because I'd been wanting him to do videos for so long. When I started my channel, I called it "People uh, People Against Rampant Stupidity" because <clears throat> I thought that it was gonna, you know, I wanted it to be us doing like funny videos together and parodies and just stupid shit and, you know, like making characters and stuff and just doing like stupid, goofy, funny shit like we do, you know, just around each other, like when we riff back and forth. Um, <clears throat> what did I think about Lacey Green's supposed conversion? I actually believe her. I do. I believe Lacey Green. Um... Lacey Green, I I made fun of her. I parodied her a couple times. Um, I called my character, I think I called her just Lucy Green or something. I didn't change the name very much. It was very obvious it was her. <clears throat> because I that's Lacey Green's the one that I look like the least out of anyone I parodied. So <clears throat> I try to like do, I, I do my makeup and do shadowing in different ways and I even like try to like shadow my nose like crooked, like I will study their face and like try to do my makeup. I, I actually put a lot of work into my parodies and <clears throat> gets me into character. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. It's, it's just fun for me to do. Um, <clears throat> but Lacey Green was hard because I looked, I don't really look like her. Um, my hair's dark. I couldn't get my hair, I couldn't lighten my hair. So I just kind of did the best I could with what I had. And I just kind of like put a little, you know, char thing there and and uh, a nose ring or whatever. And did the, I didn't kind of had the glasses like her and just really was, you know, enthusiastic and goofy. Um, but I only parodied her like once. I think I parodied her least out of everybody. And I think one of the reasons why is because I do believe her. I think, um, or I think that she, I genuinely think she's actually probably a really nice person. <clears throat> um, she seems, you know, she actually seems pretty genuine in, uh, what she's, um, in what she's saying. I do think that she, you know, she had some strong opinions, but I think she kind of realized they were unrealistic and she kind of got sucked into it a little bit. Um... So, yeah, that's what I think about that. But anyways, about the armored, yeah, the armored derp incident. <laughs> yeah, it was really funny. So, my husband says, grab a camera and um, sits down. And I, the camera's shaking because I'm, I was a whore. I was laughing. I was trying so hard to hold it still and I was trying so hard not to laugh. But I'm sitting there just cracking up the whole time and, and shaking. So, that was back, um, he had a, 
big scruffy beard then, which I like that he shaves because, you know, he does that. Actually, our daughter, uh, I don't think you're too far off. <clears throat> yeah, I think that, you know, I, I, I think that she was pretty, I mean, I think she was red-pilled, basically, if, if for lack of a better term. Uh, she was, she definitely uh, was converted. She's not, um, yeah, about Lacey. I don't think I'm far off either. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's my uh, opinion about Lacey. Did you guys see that Anita Sarkeesian's like back our favorite fucking person? <sniffs> Anita Sarkeesian. You know, <laughs> I still I I do a, a, an Anita cash in again character because I just thought she was full of shit and she just tries to cash in on people's ideologies and their crap and she tries to cash in on being a victim and I think she's totally fucking full of shit. <clears throat> so I really enjoyed like parodying her. So it was a uh, parodying Anita was a lot of fun. I like doing Anita cash in again. <sighs> but I saw that she was uh she was back doing um fuck what was she fucking talking about? That's what I want to look up. I want to look up what Anita was uh, what Anita Sarkeesian was looking at what was talking about. I saw a video about her the other day and I was like, what the flying fuck? She's just, she, everything she talks about is just fucking crazy. She's a nut job. All, just all around. Feminist Frequency Show uploads, podcasts. She's nuts. Tropes and video. Oh, this. She makes me fucking crazy. She really does. <laughs> I swear to God, this whole tropes and video game stuff. I mean, the, I, I get so pissed at people who are like, who talk about violence in video games and shit like that. It really pisses me off because I have nephews. I have. <clears throat> Yeah, I, it makes me wonder how she got sucked into the first place. Maybe it's an effort to make friends in college. It seems to be main motivation from... I I do think that's true. I think that they start, it, they start out just kind of um, figuring, you know, doing that... Sh basically being influenced in college. And they're all being influenced in whether she buys into it or not. And you know what? She could be a conniving bitch who saw, who knew from the beginning, just saw an opportunity like, wow, all these people are really fucking stupid and fucked up. I can take advantage of them. You know, you know it's like you kind of got to wonder what's going on in the back of her head. It's like, what, what is her actual motivation? Is she really, does she really believe this shit? Does she actually believe the fucking bullshit that she spews? Or is she, I mean, is she genuinely... <clears throat> like fucking fucked up where she is intentionally taking advantage of people because they she knows they're weak because she knows that she can play off their ideology and she can get what she wants out of them i really have to wonder like what the fuck is like her you know what what her real motivation is for what she does i i i really wonder about her because when she talked about she she very clearly talked about how she was not a gamer and, you know, I had to learn a lot to do. I, I'm not a gamer. I've never been a gamer and blah, blah, blah. And then afterwards, she's like, I'm a gamer. I'm a gamer. I'm a gamer. I, I It really feels like she's like, well, if I play this position, then I'm going to make more money off. P I don't understand people like that. I don't get, I'm, ne I'm not one of those people. I don't understand that fucking motivation. I don't get the motivation that people have to fucking take advantage of other people. I don't have that in me. I, I don't have, you know, I don't have it in me to just fucking like sit there and like lie to people to their face or and, <laughs> I, I just can't do that. I, I, it's, I, am I weird? Like, am I the weird one? I, I really want to know because fucking, I, <laughs> I don't know. I, I just, it's not me. I could never steal. I, it's just not something I could do. I don't get it. I don't, I, I don't understand that mentality. And 
that's what really bothers me about so many people these days. People and, and the entitlement. The fucking entitlement. Oh my god. I Living down south. Okay, this is a big reason why I'm up north. <clears throat> I don't want, I mean, my husband and I do not want our kids, you know, growing up in this area. And this is just an example. <clears throat> um, when we first moved down there, I was, um, I smoked cigarettes. I was in line at the tobacco store. And the lady behind the counter was an older lady. I mean, she was probably in her late well shoot you know she just looked really bad and she could tell she was not doing well I mean she was old and you know not well off she just poor old lady it was really sad but <clears throat> this guy comes in so this guy is in line in front of me and he says to her he says give me a pack of cigarettes and she says wait you want to buy a pack of cigarettes and he said no I want you to give me a pack of cigarettes <laughs> and she's like I'm not gonna just give you a pack of cigarettes and he's like, he's like, why? You white? You can afford it? I was like, Are, is this a fuck? Is like, am I on candid camera? I'd never experienced anything like this. Like, and this is, just, and now it, it's, we realized that things like that had become normal to us. And that's not okay. You know, we don't want it to become normal to our kids. They're at that age where we just don't want it to be normal. Um, seeing stuff like this. Or seeing people like, you know, seeing two employees at the gas station, you know, you walk in and they're like, oh yeah, that motherfucker, yeah, that motherfucker, that motherfucker at the, I, like, no one, <laughs> they're at work. <laughs> they are at work. I don't, we're, I, I don't want my kids growing up thinking that's normal, you know, it's just things like that, that really, you know, started like getting to all of us and it was, so yeah, <clears throat> so that's what's going on there. But um, <clears throat> very, very odd and very, very different. Um, but anyhow, guys, I'm going to wrap this up because I got to get up at the really early, early morning to uh, take my son to school. And anyways, so, um, you know, I'll see you whenever I decide to pop back in to talk to myself again. But um, for now, love y'all, especially you, Jeremiah, if you see this.